wonderful story about a donkey that falls in a well. The donkey's owner hears the braying of the upset beast, comes over to the well, looks down, sees the donkey way down there in that well, wondering, am I ever going to be able to get this donkey out of the well? It's an old donkey anyway, and I do need to fill in this well because it's not productive anymore in any case. So instead of trying to get the donkey out, he invites his friends over, they bring their shovels, and they begin taking spadeful after spadeful of dirt and dumping it on the poor beast's head. Well, the donkey, realizing what's going on, begins braying catastrophically, making a huge racket. The men steady themselves and continue shoveling. But something funny happens. After a while, the donkey starts shaking it off, takes a few steps, and mounts himself up onto that pile of dirt, shakes it off again. And before long, the donkey is rising in the soil in the well. And finally, one more shovelful, one more shake, a couple more steps, and boom, donkey jumps out of the well and walks off happy as you can be, after giving one final shake and covering the farmers with dust. There are quite a few ways to look at this story. And the one that speaks to me right now is the possibility of walking away clean from the loads of debris that could burden or even smother us. The four-legged hero of our story manages to dodge all the burden being thrown his way and step free of it to walk away clean and unburdened from a mountain of mess. We all have new starts in our lives. The end of one job and the beginning of another. The start of a new relationship. A new school a new congregation, a new home. Such moments in our lives bring a remarkable mix of feelings, a powerful combination of fear and excitement. For me, it almost feels like an electric charge, both energizing and also very shaky. And such times have also been filled with another strong feeling, a sense of freedom, starting new and fresh. There is no history to weigh us down. In the new job, the boss has never been disappointed with us. We've never missed a deadline, never forgot to go to a meeting, and we never yelled at a coworker for the annoying way that they do whatever it is they do. The coworkers They'll seem nice, interesting. The boss is wise. The work, an interesting challenge. Maybe it won't change, uh, but it always does. In the new relationship, there's always the first fight, the first disillusionment, the first time you find those dirty socks on the floor the first time you realize that your partner is not up to your standards or your expectations in some way. I think of President Obama. When he first took office, he was perfect for about 30 seconds. <laughs> and then he was human, and the dirt of, begins to build up. If you've ever played video games, one of the most wonderful things is that you can start over. You can even delete your character altogether and be born brand new. Of course, our lives, our lives don't realistically offer the opportunity to live completely clean very much of the time. We have to make our way through the muck. 
that which we've created ourselves, and the rest that has been thrown down upon us. Life is very much about making the best with what we're given. And yet this doesn't mean that we have to just stand there as the mess around us piles up and begins to overtake and suffocate us. We can have the opportunity, and I would say that we have the duty to do what we can to get that stuff out of our way. The week ahead is an interesting one. Thursday brings the celebration of the Jewish holiday of Rosh Hashanah. The, run, the month of Ramadan ends on Friday with the celebration known as Eid al-Fitr. And Saturday, Saturday is the ninth anniversary of the attacks in Manhattan that we now know just as 9-11. 9-11 is a date that has come to symbolize a conflict between cultures, and especially between the two kindred faiths whose holidays are celebrated this week, two faiths whose languages are so closely related, whose stories are so deeply intertwined. There is so much burden, so many shovelfuls of soil around us now. We cannot see our way out of this particularly dark, deep hole. Rosh Hashanah is the time when in Judaism God is said to judge people according to their acts. Those who, like most of us, are neither irredeemably wicked nor saintly in some sort of superhuman Mother Teresa kind of way, are given a chance over the following 10 days to redeem themselves. We are given a chance, at least in God's eyes, to begin a new year clean. And Eid al-Fitr, Eid is an Arabic word meaning festivity, and fitter means to purify. Festivity of purification. Remarkably, again, we come upon the notion of purification and cleansing. Eid al fitter symbolizes purification following 30 days of Ramadan fasting. It symbolizes moving forward clean. I don't know about you, but there are plenty of ways in which I want a fresh start. First, there are people who are angry with me or feel hurt by me. I feel those broken connections weighing on me like so much earth holding me down. And then there are the things I'm carrying around myself, angers, hurts, frustrations of my own, some are directed towards others, and some are directed toward myself. I don't want to go forward with all of this stuff around me. I want to step to the top of the pile, shake it off, and walk away clean. And this is what I invite you to do with me right now. In the Jewish tradition, one of the customs for Rosh Hashanah is called tashlech. Jews throw pebbles or bread into water as a symbolic casting off of sin. Well, we have water and we have beans. And in a moment, I'll invite you to come into the center of the circle one by one, to take a bean or a few beans, hold it for a moment, and place it in the water imagining that you are cleansed as you put aside your burden. The next 10 days are known in Judaism as the days of awe. It is in this time, the days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, that Jews are meant to make amends for their wrongdoings of the previous year. As you put down your burden of beans, you may well recognize that you need to make amends with others to fully put aside those burdens. 
May we all know that this can be a time of amends and forgiveness. May we make it a time to repair what has been strained or broken and bring as much openness of heart to that project. There is one more thing that I would like to ask of each of you. As each person returns to their seat from placing their burdens, their beams, their sins in the water, let us embrace and support them by saying these words. We forgive you and care for you. Begin again in love. Can we say that all together now? We forgive you and care for you. Begin again in love. I invite you now to come forward as you feel moved to do so.